about, uh, I've been on a series called Defined, uh, The Truth Will Make You Free. And uh, for so long, uh, people, people have been letting their past dictate who they are. They've been letting who they, what they were in their past, the situations of their past, been letting things mold and potter them and to give them identity. And uh, that's not, listen, when you become a new creation, you get stamped with a new identity. Come on, you've had a DNA change. That's what happened. Divine nature applied. <laughs> That's what happened is the DNA got changed on the, the, the divine nature of God moved in on the inside of you. Now, you can be saved but stuck. You can be saved but still walking around in grave clothes. We've talked about this already extensively. So you can be saved, going to heaven, but still experience bondage. And I think if we all would be honest, there's probably something in all of our lives that are kind of holding us down or tying us down. It's part of life, and it's a part of us being sanctified. So I believe we all can really relate to this, this series that we've been, been on. But uh, in 3 John 2, it says this, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your what? Your soul prospers. The last time we were together, we really talked about this a lot. About the soul of man is the hinge. The soul of man is the X factor. The soul of man is what's going to determine whether what's on the inside of you is going to get to come out on the outside. See, God wants his word to become flesh. Oh yeah, it, it, it became flesh with Jesus, but it's still becoming flesh. He wants us to produce, to demonstrate the word of God. He wants us to demonstrate who he is. To the world. That's what we're called to do. And the life of God, if you're born again, it's on the inside of you. So we see right here, my life's going to be affected by what my soul. I'm talking about your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's what I'm talking about. You are a tripart being. You guys know this, right? You are a spirit, right, that lives in a body and possesses a mind or a soul. That's who you are. You are a spirit. That lives in a body and possesses a soul. You are a tripartite being. When you got born again, your soul didn't get saved. Your spirit did. Okay? So, so your, spirit, your spirit has got the life of God on the inside of it. So what I have to do, i got to make what's on the inside of me a reality by renewing my mind. By getting my soul controlled. you got to have soul control. Look at your neighbor and say, get some soul control. Yeah, I helped you, husbands. I just helped you out right there. <laughs> You've been wanting to say it all day. So what I'm doing, what's going on inside of my mind is going to dictate what's going to be happening in my life. No person, listen to me now, no person consistently can consistently behave in, one, in a certain way without changing the way they think. You, you, consistently, you can change yourself by willpower alone for a while. But true change only comes through the, the mind of man being renewed. Right. Amen? Now go with me to uh, James chapter 1. I'm just kind of getting to where I'm trying to, I was trying to recap just a little here to get us where we need to be. Verse 21, James 1, 21. Your soul needs healed. We've all been affected by the fall of Adam. Everybody. We've had situations, circumstances, traumas, problems, some by our own uh, wrong choices, some by the choices of others. We can go across, the, we, could, we all have something to share tonight in this room. We all have a testimony. And we've all had some dirt in our life. We all have a past. But I don't care if you were a heroin addict, Right? Or a compulsive liar. You have one name that was stamped on you before you got born again. That was sinner. That's what you were. But we've all been wounded. The enemy is after your soul. He's after your soul. Look what he says there here. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your what? Now, if you look in verse 1 or verse 2, what's it say? The first two words are what? My brethren. 
or my cistern. Right? So he's talking to believers, but yet he's still talking about. It. You ever heard people say this? Well, we've had we've had four so we had four souls saved today. No, you didn't. You had four spirits that was taken from death unto life. Now, I understand. I'm not trying to make this a matter of semantics, okay? But it's true. We say this. Boy, we had soul. We got to get souls saved. Yeah, we do need souls saved. But we need people that are first saved, their spirit saved, brought to life, brought out of uh, death into life. Come on. Being called out of the grave. And then now we got to begin to have their, we got to get people's souls saved by teaching the word. So you notice right here, it says the word of God will save your souls. It will heal your souls. The word saved there is the Greek word sozo, and it means heal. It means rescued. It means to deliver. So the word of God will deliver your soul. I think it's an interesting word. You see this word receive here? You see it? And receive. Everybody say receive. See, the word receive here actually means in the tense, it means to take it and make it your own. So see, you can sit here and just lazily listen to me tonight. And your mind can be 5,000 miles away from here and not be a good receiver. Or you can reach out and say, yes, that's my word. Yes, that's my word. Yes, that's my word. You've got to take it. It's tenacity. You've got to be tenacious in this thing. Listen, the enemy doesn't, listen, he, he plays for keeps. And he's real serious about what he does. So why can't you and I, we, me and you got to have the same tenacity. The kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. It's time for you and I to take a hold of the kingdom, take a hold of the word, and get this word inside of us and let it save our souls and deliver us out of this junk and these cycles of sin that you and, God, that, that you and I are in all the time. Come on, somebody. I gotta, I gotta, there's a part for me to play. It's work. Me and Carla was talking about this there yesterday. It's work to do this. It's, you don't have to work for your salvation. That's free. You just got to receive. But it takes work to renew your mind. It took work for you to get to church tonight. I mean, it took sacrifice. It, took, it takes time. If you and I are going to truly be people that are not walking around in grave clothes and are breaking out of cycles of defeat and failure and sin and insecurity and all the junk that's keeping us in bondage, it's going to take you and I receiving the word. Receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to heal your souls. Truth will heal you. Look at your neighbor and say, truth will heal you. God does laser surgery. How can you say that? It says the truth, the word of God will save your souls. That's what it says. That's what the word of God says. It says the truth. The word. How many know the word's truth? Psalm 119, 130, right? Your, the entrance of your word gives light. Jesus said in John 17, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is. So truth and light are, synops, are, are, are synonyms. They mean the same thing. So truth brings light and light heals the soul of man. So if you and I are in cycles of sin, it's because there's darkness there. Because see, sin feeds off the environment of darkness. Sin feeds off of the environment of darkness. Like in, I've used this illustration many times, but I can remember down to the high school down here, the old high school, and they still use it today, the locker room and stuff there, and it's old. And, and, and Stevie remembers, Stevie remembered that, all those times in there, taping ankles and all that. And, 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 and the thing was, was that you go in there, and I remember going there early in the morning. We'd, we'd get there at school, you know, 25, 30 minutes early. I remember walking in there with our, those mesh bags, you know, and that we put all of our stuff down there in the locker room. And, and, you know, the lights would be off. And the minute you turned the lights on in that locker room, roaches went everywhere. <laughs> you remember that, Jamie? <laughs> because, see, when light comes, darkness, things that are, the, the cockroaches of our lives start to scatter. <laughs> because, see, light always heals us. 
So you say, well, how do I get healed from my soul wounds? How do I get healed from what's been going on? How do I get healed of all this stuff that's been going on in my life and this fear and this anxiety? And well, how do I get over this? you got to get light. you got to let light shine in. Let the light shine in. Amen. So as so, so soon as light starts coming, God starts doing laser surgery on you. Are you with me here? i got to walk in the light. As he is in the light. And as I walk in the light, as he is in the light, the Bible says we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our unrighteousness. As you and I walk in light, light comes, it heals us and cleanses us of the garbage that's going on in our life. Come on, somebody. You say, well, I wanted some, some fancy way to get healed in my soul. I'm going to tell you the fancy way. It's called the Word. And you've got to get the Word on the inside of you. It's got to become a part of who you are. It's got to become a living reality to you. You can't live off of my, uh, you can't live off of one message, church. You and I have got to get in this book if you got an issue going on in your life find the scriptures and get that thing and meditate on that thing and get that light on the inside of your mind and let it heal you and let it deliver you yeah give him a good hand clap of praise that's good that's good we need to do that praise God so we all have situations going on and when light comes God is light First John 1 John 1.5, God is light, and in him there is no what? Darkness at all. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. God is light. So when God comes, light comes. And when light comes, healing comes, because God brings healing. That's God. That's the God we serve. He loves us and he cares for us. Amen. Are you with me here? So, so we see because of life circumstances and situations that come to us all, we've all been dealt some type of hand in our life. Uh, like I said, some that we've caused on our own and some was just the byproduct of someone else's failures or mistakes. But we've all had stuff going on. And if you don't watch out, it'll wound your soul. And what happens is when you've got a wounded soul, you start living out of the hurt and the pain and it, it tears your life up. And that's where the devil wants you. Because he hates you. The devil hates you. Because why? He hates the one that's living on the inside of you. It's really got nothing to do with you at all. It's got everything to do with him and God. He's declared war on God by declaring war on you. Because why? Because you're made in his image. So the next thing you know, you say, well, I'll tear down his image. And see, that just makes him like, you know, oh, see, look, God. Look. That was right there. That was one of yours. And look what I've done to him. The devil hates you. He hates me. He wants to keep you in bondage. He can't keep you out of heaven. So he wants to keep you in bondage. And make your life a living hell. Now I don't know about you. But I get really upset about that. Because that's not the life that Jesus promised me. Jesus said I, he come to give me life. And not just life. He come to give me abundant life. Jesus gave his life on a cross that you and I won't have to put up with this junk in our life. And it's time for you and I to put our foot down and say, you know what? This is the last day of that. Come on. You've got you to be that serious. and You've got to take the word and say, this is it. No more. And you've got to plant your sword. You've got to plant your flag. You've got to plant your feet and say, I'm not budging. I'm not moving. I might not see it break tomorrow, but it's going to break. But the more I let that light shine in, it's going to break. What's going on today? Everybody's got a struggle. The deal is, we start letting the struggle identify us. The minute you and I stop fighting, it becomes your identity. So what's going on with people that are struggling with homosexuality? They've let their struggle become their identity. No one's denying that they had same-sex attraction or people have same-sex attraction. It's sinful world we live in. But the deal is, the minute you stop fighting it, and that's what they do. They quit fighting the struggle. There's many people, and you've got to understand, in that debate, there is two different sides. You've got ones that are the militant bunch that are out here that are, you know, that are waving flags and hollering and screaming. You have, that's what you have. And you've got some folks that's just struggling. And you've got to handle them two different ways. I don't have time to talk about this, but we've got to do it in love. But there's two different ways you've got to handle these types of people. 
just like it would be in any sin. But this is the problem, no matter what it is, whether if it's, if it's an addiction or somebody that has a porn, uh, that's addicted to pornography, it's the same thing. The minute you stop fighting it, and the struggle, when you, keep, you stop resisting it, then all of a sudden you just begin to accept that this is who I... Because it's easier to do that. It's easier to, it's easier to quit fighting. It's easier to quit fighting your pornographic addiction than to say, I'm going to continue to fight and stand and resist the enemy in this area. So, we've all have wounds in our souls that needs to be healed. Now go with me real quick to 2 Corinthians. Let's go over here. I mean, I'm on a jet. I'm going to go into jet mode. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Soul wounds. You're, you could be, have a wounded soul. You could have a wounded soul. And that's why I want to kind of, I want to talk tonight really about this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, look what it says right here in verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Now I want you to see this. You've got to pay close attention. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the what? You can't fight this battle with your own power. You can't fight your struggle. You can't fight... The, 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 the fear on your, you can't, this is, this is a spiritual battle. You can't fight inferiority. You can't fight shame. You can't fight these cycles on your own. He said, lo, we walk in the flesh. We don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our, now notice what it says. It says what? Our. It's a personal. The enemy has declared war on you. He's lobbed missiles into your green zone. He's fired his shots off of the bow of the boat. He's, he, he has declared war. He said it's our, it's our warfare. It's not your, if you can't go, well, that's your battle. We all got a warfare. You're in a battle. Everybody in this room, it's war and you're in it. Whether you like it or not, you're in a battle. The weapons... Of our warfare are not carnal, are not worldly, are not fleshly, are not your own strength. He said the, re- the, the way you're going to win this war is not with some type of natural process. It's going to take spiritual weaponry, spiritual firepower to take this thing down. But mighty in God, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Everybody say strongholds. Strongholds are soul wounds. Strongholds are soul wounds. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, thoughts, reasonings, imaginations, And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought, every thought, every thought, every thought. If the Bible says that you can take every thought captive, you can take every thought captive. Taking every thought, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and be ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, to get free, it's going to take an encounter with the supernatural power of God. If you're going to have your soul wounds healed, it's going to take supernatural power. There's weaponry for you and I. God has given it to us in His Word to set us free. Are you with me here? Notice the battle is won and lost in your mind. The the battle is won and lost in your mind because the mind is the access point for the enemy, okay? The mind is the access point for the enemy. Now, the word stronghold here, it means castle. It means castle. It means a fortress or a prison. Okay, think about it. So he gives you some major illustration of what this stronghold would look like in your mind. It looks like a castle. It looks like a prison. It looks like a fortified place. See, castles are built to keep people from what? Coming in. See, prisons are built to keep people from what? 
Yeah, that's what happens, see, in a stronghold, see. See, it keeps people from, it keeps you from, a, from, from letting truth in. It, it will keep you from allowing people to, to come in. It, it will cause you not to be vulnerable in your life. It will cause you not to let down your guard or let somebody help you. But it will also be a prison to keep you bound. That's a stronghold. A prison there to keep you isolated. So, so, so let, me, let me just kind of give you this real quick. A stronghold is certain ways of thinking that holds a person in bondage. Now stay with me. Certain ways of thinking that holds a person in bondage. It exerts power over that person. So lies that get ingrained into the mind and begins to change the belief system of a person and begins to exert its power, exert its power over certain areas of people's life and it keeps them in bondage. That's what a stronghold is. A stronghold is. Think about a creek bed. How a water, how water flows through a creek bed, okay? That, that, that's been channeled. So no matter what goes on, that water's always going to flow the way of that channel. That's a stronghold. No matter what it is you're facing in your life. See, strongholds are always Listen now, the stronghold always comes out in pressure. So when pressure comes, you want to find out what your thinking's like. Come on, has anybody been here before? I've been right here. I understand what this is. This is I'm preaching to me. So, so what happens is, it, it, the stronghold is like that drip of water that comes off of a building, and it's hitting the concrete. And over time, what happens? It erodes it. That's what a stronghold is. It's over time of, of you not dealing with your thinking and, 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 and circumstances and situations and, and, and the things of life coming up. You don't guard your mind and next thing you know it finds its way in there and it starts eroding a, a, a bed, a, a, a water, a, a, a channel in your mind. So no matter what goes on, all of a sudden your thought life just continually goes that way. All right, let me, let me help you. Uh, let's say that, that, that a person is, and, I, and I'm using these quotes, and we're going to say big sins, but there's not. But listen, it's like a person that gets saved that, that maybe was looking at pornography all the time. Okay, and then all of a sudden you find out when you woke up on Monday morning after getting saved on Sunday that you still have some desires in your, in your, in your mind. You got, this, got this, these ideas and these thoughts. And, because why? Your mind has, has went that direction for so long so that every time you look at a woman, or every time you look at a man, your mind all, all, all of a sudden goes in that channel. Or if you was a compulsive liar, or somebody that was, whatever it would be. Or you're a person that has low self-esteem, every time somebody gives you a compliment, it's always the same response. Or, I'm just so unworthy, and how could God ever love me? And I'm never good enough. And see, it's revealing that you have a soul wound. And what it is, see, it's a stronghold. And you're thinking that way. And that channel's been dug out by the circumstances of life. And every time the thought pattern comes on, the flow of the thought starts to come. It goes in that channel. You and I have got to learn to destroy that channel and bring a new channel. How do you do that? Through the light of the word of God. Amen. The, the enemy just needs a door. He just needs a crack. Ephesians 4.27 says, Neither give place. The one translation says a foothold. That's what the enemy does. He'll let you go through the door and he'll step in behind you and go, Just a crack. That's, why, that's how he operates. So the battle fills the mind. So I have to watch what I'm doing, church. I've got to make sure that it, 
I give access to the enemy through ignorance, unbridled emotions and thoughts, sinful activity, life circumstances. If we don't respond right to life circumstances, if you don't watch out or give a place to the enemy, it'll cause you to think wrong thoughts about God and who he is and wrong thoughts about people around you just because of circumstances. You've got to respond right. I, I, I mean, I, I've not walked where you've walked. I understand that. I don't have that testimony that you have. And you say, well, Pastor Paul, it's easy for you to say, I get it, I understand, but I'm just telling what the word says tonight. And, and, and I'm just telling you that we have to watch out because if you don't respond right to life circumstances, the next thing you know, you'll find yourself doubting God, doubting faith, doubting the word. You'll think God has healed some and, and killed some. And you'll think this, that, and the other about God. And God don't love me and all this stuff. All this, all this is happening is because we have, we've had a circumstance come in our life and we let it potter us instead of letting the Lord potter us in the middle of the circumstance. See, that's the deal. See, the many times we, 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 we take God off of the potter's wheel and we put the enemy on it and we let him potter us instead of just continue to let him let, let the enemy or let, let God potter us. We don't want the enemy to potter our lives. We don't want situations to potter our lives. Come on. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen. You could get a phone call like Jim Sayer. You could do that. There's something bad's happened, but what are we going to do? Are we going to set? we got to say, okay, what can I do right now? I'm hurt and I'm in pain. I get it. But God, I thank you right now that I'm a son. I thank you right now that I'm a daughter. I don't understand all that's going on, but Father, how can I right now in the midst of this situation let you mold me and make me and let me reflect you to the world? That's a believer. You get me in the locker room of someone that's praising God in the law. And that's the person right there that's a real believer. It's easy to praise God in the winning locker room. Come on. It's easy to praise God when all's going well. But you get in the middle of a losing locker room. Someone's able to give praise to God in the midst of the circumstance. And we've done that in this church. And I look across this room. I have seen people do that in the midst of their problems. Lift their hands and praise God. Listen, you and I are true believers in Jesus. We believe the word, church. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. We're not going to let situations potter us. Because the enemy's looking for a place to wound your soul. Hallelujah. He's trying, and he's trying, he's trying. Let me show you how to deal with this real quick. Go to James real quick. Let's, let's move through this quickly. How do I deal with the stronghold? How do I deal with the stronghold? How do I deal with a soul wound? It was a Pastor Paul, how do I know that if I have a soul wound? That's a good question. Great question. Let me give you just a couple things how you may know before I get into this that you may have a stronghold. Incorrect perceptions of God, contrary to God's word. If you think contrary to God's word, it's a stronghold. Incorrect perception of yourself. If you think you're just born to lose and I'm a loser by birth and I'm a loser and my mom and dad was a loser and I'm going to be a loser, that's a stronghold. That's not true. It's a stronghold. How about an, uh, uh, the incorrect perception of your situation? Many people think they're hopeless. Many people think they're hopeless, that there's never a hope, there's no more hope for me. There's no hope for my life, no hope for my marriage, no hope, no hope, no hope, no hope, no hope. There's hope. But a stronghold will make you think it's hopeless. Though people tell you the truth, you can't see it. Though people are telling you the truth, it's blade as day. Sin will make you stupid. Sorry, that probably wasn't kosher on the internet, was it? But it's true. It'll blind you. Next thing you know, you'll be talking to somebody or this, that, and the other, and you'll be out here thinking it's okay, and you'll be talking to this woman or that woman, you're talking about that man, you think it's all right to do that, and chat a little bit on Facebook to somebody, and, 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 and it just make you blind, just stupid, just, just go stupid, just go stupid. Just, I don't know, there's another word for it, it's just stupid. <laughs> Sorry, that's the word of the night. What's, what did Pastor Paul preach on? Stupid, just stupid. <laughs> but it's true, we become blinded to things. People could look at you and say, man, it's not right what you're doing, man. This is not who you are. And you know, just, oh no, I'm cool, I'm good. I'm great. There's nothing wrong with this. It's very innocent. And then two months down the road, you're in an affair. Well, I try to tell you. People that deal with low self-esteem, thinking negatively about themselves. These are all just some ways that we might be under the influence of a stronghold. Let's look here in James 4. How do we deal with a the stronghold? Therefore, or, or verse 6, but he gives more grace. Everybody say more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, 
but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep, and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Uh, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. I'm going to give you some real quick points here. How do I get over a stronghold? Number one, you've got to identify if you have one. That's what he said right here. He said, resist. God resists the proud and he gives grace to the what see humility is saying God you know I need you I have an issue I have a problem pride says I have no problem first thing I got to do is identify I, I have a problem I have an issue identify that you have a stronghold be honest if you're hurt you're wounded you're hurt and you're wounded are you hurting everybody? See, hurt people hurt people. Hurt people just hurt people. A dog will always bite the hand of the person. If they're hurt, they'll bite the, they'll bite the hand that, that loves them the most and trying to help them. So just identify if you're hurt, you're, you're, you're hurt. I mean, this is not, a, faith doesn't deny problems. Number two, look what it says in verse 7. First, you gotta, he gives grace to the humble. He gives power to those that admit, hey, listen, I've got an issue. Number two, therefore, submit to God. Number two, I've got to submit to God. You encounter lies with truth. That's how you submit to God. You submit to his truth. You submit to his truth. You heal your soul by the implanted word. Line your thoughts up with God's word. All right, you say, well, Pastor, I'll show you this in a second before I close. I'll show you this. But listen, it's not going to happen. It probably won't happen in a day. It's going to take you tomorrow morning waking up with an, an index card maybe. With a scripture or two scripture or three scripture on it. And you carrying that thing around in your pocket. I've done this. And, and, and when, it, when that thought comes and that thing's trying to go that same route, you've got to become this serious about it. You've got to take, you've got to receive the word. You might have to carry around your little New Testament in your pocket or your phone saved with you version, whatever it is, a snap, a screenshot it of the scripture. And keep your eyes on it. Submitting yourself to God. Lining yourself up with the word. Meditation. Everybody say meditation. I don't, it's, it's, it's interesting about meditation. Because meditation, I'm not talking about disengaging your mind. That's not meditation. That's wrong meditation. I'm not talking about... Mm, and escaping to... You want to do that right now? Let's, let's, let's just go to Hawaii right now. Let's just do it. You want to? <laughs> Nadine, just... just I'm not talking about that. See, scriptural meditation is engaging your mind. It's, it's focusing and chewing the cud. The word meditation in the Hebrew means to chew it over and over and over. And you know what a cow does? He, he chews it and he swallows it. And guess what he does next? He, he yeah, back up. And he chews it some more. And, and then he swallows it. And then, then he throws it back up. And he chews on it some more. He's getting every bit of that nutrients out of that grass or feed or whatever he is he's eating. Are you with me here? It's the same way with you and I. What are you feeding on? You and I have to feed on the, when we have issues, you've got, you got to feed on the promises and not feed on the TV and not feed on Facebook and not feed. You got to, if you're having an issue, listen, it, it's, it's a two different things when you're in the battle when you're not in the battle. Come on, it's two different things. When you're in the middle of a trench, it, it, when you're in the middle of a trench, what are you looking? You're looking for your buddy. You're, you're watching your head. You're making sure your weapon's around. But when you're over here in, in the camp somewhere where there's not a, a battle, you're, you're caring about what's going on at the mess hall and, and, you can, and you care about playing cards with your friends but when you're in the battle it's a whole different mindset can I, can, are, you, can I, are you understanding this are you getting, so, so, so the thing is, is you, if you're in a battle you've got to show up he's declared war against you the weapons of our warfare 
So I got to meditate on the word. Get the word in me. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. Well, I'm not seeing any change. Meditate on it. What if I'm not seeing any change? Meditate on it. What if I'm not seeing any change? Meditate on it. What if I'm not seeing any change? Meditate on it and meditate. And all of a sudden, light will start breaking through and you'll start sensing it on your mind and your heart will start registering on you and you'll see yourself starting to break free of these cycles. It works. That's a good point. But we don't believe the word enough that we'll make, we won't let the word work. Come on. If we'll work the word, the word will work. Okay. Number three, hurry. Resist the devil. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will what? From you. I think it's the Amplified says it. Flee as in terror. The devil's a bully. See, all, you ever heard this about sports and about football? Is that they say that defense wins championships. Right? Have I heard that? In the kingdom, offense wins championships. We are not to be on the defensive. We're all to all the time to be on the offensive. See, the armor was, they didn't have anything on the back of the armor for a reason. You, you, wasn't, you wasn't covered with the armor on the back side. And there was a reason for that because you were never made to run from the battle. You were made to run to it. <laughs> and the minute, minute you and I start running, you're going to get an error right between your shoulder blades. Come on, somebody. I'm just trying to help us. I'm getting stirred up. I'm going to run, I think. Attack it. Everybody say attack. Yeah. Attack the stronghold. He said resist the devil. Submit to God in his word and start taking this thing at him. Take it at him. Don't be passive about it. Don't be a sissy. Come on now. Come on. It's time to put your big boy pants on. I done it right that time. <laughs> I live in a house full of girls, so I usually say panties. Put your big girl panties on. <laughs> it's tough being in a house with all women. You have to work with God to tear down strongholds. Number four, he says what in verse eight? Draw near to what? God. I'm telling you how to do this, church. I'm telling you, recognize you got it. If you got a stronghold, recognize it. Number two, you got to get that word. Right? That's what you got to do. Submitting to God, submitting to the word. And then three, third thing, you got to resist the devil. You got to resist that stronghold. Go at it. And the fourth thing he says, you got to draw near to God, and he will what? Draw near to you. God is light. So I need to go to the light if I want light to heal me. If I want truth. You say, you know what, Pastor Paul, I've been dealing with something for 12 years. Don't give up on your struggle and keep going to the light. Keep running to God. Keep drawing near to him and let him heal you. It may, listen, I'm not telling you that some kind of inst it, The Lord could deliver you instantaneously. I don't know. But listen, a lot of times it's just a process. There's a time frame. I don't know why that is. I, I mean, we could t probably, probably figure it out from the word. And I've got some indications. But the thing is, is that enduring faith matters. Matters. And sometimes you've got to push against a thousand pound boulder because you've got a bigger boulder ahead of you and God knows it. So he said, if you don't push against this thousand pound boulder, you'll never be able to push against the 1500 pound boulder. Are you with me here? So we've got to trust God in the midst of our problems and situations, but we keep going to God. We keep drawing near to Him and He keeps drawing near to us. We keep drawing near to the light and the light heals us. Don't run away from the light, run to it. Run to the light! Right? Go to the light. You know? Just go to him. Draw near to God. i got to keep going to God. And the Holy Spirit will bring his light and healing power to my soul. Now, I'm trying to hurry. But look what it says right here. How do I know I got the final blow? I mean, it's always good. Come on. When you know you got, the, you, you got them on their heels. Right? When you got the enemy on it. Come on. That's where. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. How do I know this? Look what he says. He says right here in verse Verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. He said, cleanse you, your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
Lament, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Two ways. How do I know it? The outward manifestation is easy. Now what do I mean that? To cleanse your hands is easier than purifying your heart. What do I mean? You may quit doing something by willpower alone for a while. That's your hands. But purifying your heart takes it to the root. See, if you don't take and bring out the, I mean, I mean, you, that's the whole thing with that stuff, that, that grass killer. You know, the, what's that one that you always buy? What's it? Roundup. It says it'll take it to the what? It takes it to the roots. If someone is addicted to something, they may stop for a while, but if they don't remove the root, they'll go back. So it's easy to cleanse my hands, to stop something. But it's a lot more difficult to take the axe to the root of the tree. What are you saying, Pastor Paul? He said, cleanse your hands the outward. How do I know? You start seeing stuff on the outside. You do start seeing stuff on the outside. But how do you know? <coughs> Look, he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. <coughs> Purify your hearts, you what? Double-minded. Double-minded people are people of two opinions. They, they, they make excuses all the time. And why I'm this and why I can't be free. You know then you're not. You're not getting free. But the minute you and I start being saddened over our problems, that's why it says, though, if you've got to go and turn your laughter, what? Lament and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning. Why is that? Because you're double-minded. Because why? You've not, set your, you've not set your affection on God yet. You've not made the determination that this thing is ruining my life. This thing is crazy. Look what I'm doing with my life. And you're not saddened over it. And you're not repentant over it yet. You'll go back and you'll keep going back until you really understand this breaks the heart of God what you're doing is breaking the heart of God why because you're tearing his image up listen he loves you and wants you free the, if you're never repentant over your problem you're never going to change you might change for three months but you'll keep going back to the same junk why you've not come to the place that you agree with God and say God this is not right I submit to your authority and I submit to your word you know then that you got the devil you got the devil on the run and you're getting ready to break through when you start saying you're you're repentant over this issue and saying, God, this is horrible. Well, I hate my life like this. I hate it. That's what Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus hated sin and loved righteousness. Let me give you something. You take this away with you tonight. Our love for something can be seen by what we hate. Our love for something can actually be seen by what we hate. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you hate that stronghold? If you don't hate it, you still love it. And if you love it, you'll never come to the light. That's what Jesus said in John 3. They love darkness rather than light. So they wouldn't come to the light that things could be exposed. Am I making sense to you? How do I get, how do I know? How do I know? Just keep hammering, church. Just keep hammering. Just keep hammering. Oh, there's so much I can share with you. I got to close. Let me look, let me just give you this real quick. Okay, I'm done. The progression of transformation. You got the devil and things are breaking through. This is how it starts. Listen, it starts first by duty. You just read and you confess truth and the breaking up of fallow ground in your soul. That's not a fun time. Plowing ground is not fun. So this season is really laborious. It has, has labor to it. And you see slow progression. At the beginning of this thing, you might see slow progression. But it's duty. You stay in it. The next thing goes from duty to delight. Now this is where it starts getting fun. We start sensing some light, touching our souls, our thoughts. We start seeing some change and we start seeing some movement. I'm not, I just notice, I'm not doing and thinking the same way I always thought. So you know then, see, that the word's working, light's shining, things are changing, right? And then it goes from that to deliverance. And this is where my mind is starting to be renewed and is renewed and I start winning the battle for my mind. 
I start winning it. And I find myself not going back to old, old habits and old situations. And then it goes from this. It goes from duty to delight to deliverance to demonstration. Now this is good. Because the one in bondage now becomes the deliverer. And God loves that. He loves taking Humpty Dumpties, putting them back together again, and using them to wreck hell for a living. He loves that. Broken people. God's repairs. Broken people. And then uses them to repair somebody else. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That's what you and I are called to do. But deal with those strongholds in your mind. You get the word in you. You keep the word before you. You keep the word before you. Keep the word before you. I'm not seeing any change. Keep hammering. I'm not seeing any change. Keep going. Keep running to light. Your hardest time, you ought not be back there like this singing. God has given you spiritual weaponry to deliver you. You got to use it. Sometimes, it's, listen, your your change may will may fall off if you'll step out and dance. I'm not trying to make anything happen. I'm just saying, it, when God tells you to do it, you better. It may someone in here taking a lap around this building. Well, I would okay. You just stay in your bondage. But I'm telling you, God's given you spiritual weaponry. You got to start using it, and it will break chains. Keep running to the light. Keep running to the light. Draw near to God hate that stronghold so much you know then I'm getting delivered and you start seeing change little by little we're not going to be the same five years from now come on Amen. we're going to grow making sense to you